Okay, step one, mount it back up. So you saw me rubbing oil on it there, just so the surface doesn't completely gall up when I try and put an indicator tip on it. That's sort of the tricky bit about diamond turned surfaces is they don't they don't do real well with you know physical contact. But let's bump in this indicator here and see how well we're repeating. Oh, a little too far. Okay. You can see we're not not bottomed out there. We're in the middle of travel. Oh yeah. That's what you'd like to see. See not not bottomed out. And that's the magic of the hail cup when we can take it off, do metrology on it, put it back on. It's right where it was before. This is gonna take, you know no material to clean back up again. We can just keep machining on it as we were. Awesome. Okay, here's the setup. So I'm now out, I've got the tool out on the outer rim, not actually on the mirror, on a piece of the flat, flat area. I'm way zoomed in with the microscope here, I'm about to touch off. What I'm gonna do is I've zeroed my X right now. I'm gonna touch off, make a little artificial reticle on my screen here and then move over the x-axis to the other side until the groove over here is on the reticle and then read out the x position and that will tell me the diameter that my tool was at. I can then move half of that and then that should put me pretty close to right on center line. This is a $20 Amazon microscope and it's really big and I'm really regretting the decision to have this huge micrometer handle in the way here because I can't get up as close as I would like. And it's really just not a great quality and not a lot of zoom, but we're gonna see how accurate this method can get us. Here's the crosshairs. Literally crosshair, haha. Uh -huh. All right. And here we are on the other side. On the other side, we've got the same side of the groove lined up with the crosshairs, but we're on the back side of the part, and we read that number. So we need to move half of that, and then that's our zero. Okay, we moved half of that distance and re zero to X, and now our tool should be exactly on center line. Looks pretty center to me. It's kind of hard to tell because we're coming at it from an angle, but. I think that's the center right there. Let's take a cut and see what it does. All right, here's the tool path. It looks like just one line here. You can see the spherical shape. But if I zoom in on it, for this particular go around, we're doing four passes. We've got one of 75, uh, millionths of an inch depth of cut, one of 30 millionths of an inch depth of cut, and then one of 20 millionths depth of cut for the finishing. So let's try it out. And we're off.
looks like that first pass of 75 micro inches depth of cut is going to clean it up all the way. So, another point to show how nice it is to have a repeatable work holding system like this. So here's the results from the second go around. Um, in a lot of ways better, but also in some ways worse. Um, surface finish wise, we did get a bit of an improvement here. So, you know, we've still got this, this sort of grain. Uh, you can see those ripples. And that's the, that's the vibration from the Z-axis air bearing. Um, I've got that pretty figured out. Um, but the waviness, the other waviness, when I pointed at a light source here in the distance, uh, that's that's vastly improved, and I think that's uh, partly and partly due to the um, series of passes I did, uh, starting at 75 micro inches and stepping down all the way down to 20, and I think those just creeping up on it and taking smaller and smaller passes help with some of that waviness. Um, you can see there's still a bit of a ring in the middle there. I'm not really sure what happened there. The first pass I took it actually didn't touch anything inside of that ring. The sharpie was still there. The second pass took it all off and cleaned it up all the way but it still left that, that uh, I don't I really know what it is but there's still a feature there. So not entirely clear on that. Um, so in this way it's better. Unfortunately, if we take a look at the interferometry, it's worse. Okay, so here's the last one, and here's the new one. Back to a strel of zero. Very sad. Um, not really clear as to what's going on with this, this pass. Um, I zeroed the tool with that, that new method you saw, uh, and that's, you know, that wasn't necessarily the most accurate thing in the world, but I don't even know if it accounts for, for what we're seeing here. Interestingly, the astigmatism is for the most part gone, or it's certainly not the dominant error like it was uh, in, the, in the previous cut. Um, now we've got you know high all around the outside in this little ring of low, um, which is not entirely obvious why that's there. And then further interestingly, we've got, I can, what I can do is I can compare the wave fronts here. The blue line is the results from the second pass that you just saw, and the orangish line is from the first pass um, from the other video. And there definitely is some similarities here in the, the error profile towards the middle. Now, I don't know if that's a systematic error in my uh, metrology or a machine error. It could be either. It could be something wrong with the measuring setup or it could be something with the machine. I'm sort of leaning towards machine, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it could it could be possible that this is really just, you know, the axis straightness um, or something as simple as that, or if we're just kind of, you know, diffraction limited uh, as far as machine performance until, you know, push it further and maybe map out these errors and compensate for it. I don't really know, but a little disappointed that this this turned out uh, having a worse profile than the first one, but at the same time, I'm happy that the waviness was better. I can actually, if we compare the two interferograms here, this was the first one, better form, but worse waviness, and then here on the right, better waviness, you can see the, the fringes are much less uh, sawtooth shaped, uh, if you will. These are very jagged, ripply fringes, um, but somehow, and you can see the little dip right here, much worse form around this ring, and then a very similar feature towards the center. I don't really know. There's some stuff to figure out. 
That's the joy of precision engineering and machining is there's infinite problems to solve. Never run out of issues. But yeah, that's the results. I'll keep working on it and see you guys next time.